the stock market, meaning companies, new highs. I'm not fucking leaving. The show goes on. They're nuts. They're nuts. They know nothing. An online network called Internet. Well, it's very hip to be on the Internet right now. Welcome to Market Mania, the no bullshit approach to all financial markets, including cryptocurrencies, NFTs, strange dog money, and of course, the largest casino in the world, the U.S. stock market. Joining me today are fellow degenerates Dario Alioto from across the world and of course Sharp Richie. Uh, we're going to be talking about Elon Musk's appearance on Saturday Night Live. Uh, is it possible Doge could go to zero? Uniswap version 3 just launched. We'll do our pick of the day of course, but first, top story, Doge rewards surpass Litecoin for the first time and not just by a little bit, by 200%. Now, I'm sure Charlie Lee is out there, inventor of Litecoin, just pulling his hair out, wondering what happened. So, I'm seeing a lot of meme magic in the air. Brett, how did this happen? How did we get here to strange dog money being all the headlines anybody can talk about? Yeah, I mean, Doge is going crazy. I, I believe initially Doge was considered, as it says here at the top, a bonus of merge mining on Litecoin. Litecoin miners would kind of get like bonus Doge. I don't, I don't exactly know how it works, but it was it was sort of like an afterthought. But Doge has become so popular now that and Litecoin to me is is like very uninteresting. It, it sort of started as like a almost like a Bitcoin test net type of thing where you where you can do the like fast transactions. But there are a lot of options for that. Uh, and yeah, Doge has gone crazy as we'll get to. I think Elon has played a pretty big role in uh the rise of doge but it's also it's a fun currency memes are really popular i consider it to be like the bitcoin of memes and um there is a market like people don't want to spend their bitcoin right one it's expensive and two it's gotten uh so valuable people just don't like spending it and doge it's fun to spend people don't mind spending it like there is a market for some sort of like a fast bitcoin type of coin uh, that's cheap to spend also. So I think those all kind of came together for Doge. Well, watching it surpass Litecoin is a little bit like the uh, sensei being defeated by his student because uh, Doge was a clone of Litecoin with a little bit of extra meme magic sprinkled in. It was never really intended to be anything but a joke. Here we are. Uh, it remains a joke, but Dario, do you think that this this interest in this strange coin is going to actually start driving some development towards it? Could this backstop an air of legitimacy that wasn't there before. Uh oh, I think we're uh, I think Dario's locking up here. I'm gonna we'll try and get him back here in a second. But uh, what do you think, Brett? I mean, is there some legitimacy that's coming on the yeah. back side of this? I, I think there is. Uh, one is like to me, the silver to Bitcoin's gold is is up for grabs now. I think a lot of people thought it was going to be Litecoin or whatever. And to me, Doge is now the front runner for that. And if you look at the regular market, gold trades at like 7.6 X to silver. Not saying crypto is going to mirror that. But again, with, with Bitcoin as digital gold, there is the demand for like a silver that people really don't mind parting with as much as they do. Like people really just like holding their um, Bitcoin. So I think that the demand is there. Mike on, if he were here, he'd say, well, they haven't done anything in their GitHub in a while. Okay, it's like an $80 billion market cap now. At some point, if it was going to be 51% attacked or whatever, if that was a big risk, I think um, you can, you'd can you be seeing some of that. So I'm, I'm not too worried. It seems to be pretty secure. I don't know what work needs to be done. It seems to be working really well. It's cheap and uh, people get to use it. And we got uh, Dario back. Hey, hey, Dario. Thanks uh, for coming back here. Uh, we were just wondering if all this attention given to Dogecoin is going to give it some legitimacy. I'm guessing you don't think so, though. I can see that already the Doge Mafia is striking my hardware. So <laughs> it looks like uh, somehow they're already yeah. uh, working on it. 
look, um, the thing is that uh, on Doge, uh, most of the buyers of uh, last month, uh, they have no idea of uh, what they are doing. They don't even know that it doesn't take $60,000 to buy Bitcoin. So I would uh, say a few things. I don't know if what I missed because I was kind of offline. But first, the fact that uh, the rewards have uh, passed Litecoin, it's kind of normal now because if you look at the market pa uh, the market cap, uh, Doge it went uh, four times higher than Litecoin, and it's like sixteen or seven percent away from reaching BNB, which is ridiculous for me because BNB we know how it's been going. It's been skyrocketing. It is uh, basically competing with Ethereum. And uh, when you see a meme coin, which is getting close to that, it doesn't look uh, realistic for me. Um, I don't know. Did you already talk about Elon on uh, Saturday Night Show? We haven't, but that's a great because segue. Uh, let's bring that up because this has some uh, pretty interesting implications beyond just a Saturday Night Live appearance. So, Dario, why don't you take us through this and your thoughts on this appearance here? Well, for sure, I have seen uh, a lot of uh, pumps onto this new and uh, it's been going really unreasonable and uh, what they expect Doge, uh, what they expect Elon to do when he goes there like that he would uh, make a metamorphosis and transform himself into a Doge dog or something like that what he can do as far as I know uh, he will have a speech it will be written it will be uh, authorized by the SEC because, I mean, <laughs> they are kind of worried of what he could do. We know that they've been trolling the SEC. It said that he doesn't respect them, even if there have been some change there at the board. Um, well, of to course, be fair, they want the to SEC make sure... is a barrel of laughs, so they maybe should write for SNL. But I'm sorry to for, interrupt you, saying. I, I... I, I completely understand. Of course, I'm not defending the ACC. I would never do it, but there is some... They don't like each other, so... For example, maybe he could try to to to, to use some trick. He could uh, say the speech and then say something, huh, oh, much wow, or he could, like, start barking. He could do anything. He could strip himself, his, his shirt, and have some t-shirt underneath with the Doge dog uh, in there printed. He could... He could try any trick which maybe checks with his lawyer that he should not get sued or he should not get fun is is so far if tried anything and he's having a lot of fun with it so i don't expect him to not to try things but also the expectation of what he could do and they have been so high so i expect actually that the, those expectations they will uh, not be met so that could for me, it is easier that it will dump on Saturday rather than pumping. Interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah, sorry, Brett. Go ahead. No, I I, I agree with that. I think that like one uh, crypto recently, a lot of uh, coins have sort of traded on the buy the rumor, sell the news type of behavior. So I think that the run up to Saturday Night Live, regardless of whether he pumps Doge or not, I think it's likely that people are like going to start selling it. Maybe even before. We saw it hit 69 cents, which was sort of one of the first meme level targets, and it dumped back to 60 cents. The whole, um, the main meme target is a dollar, right? Can Doge get to a dollar? I don't know. Like, again, I would be looking to um, take gains if I had Doge right now, because I don't think there's a whole lot, like the Saturday Night Live pump to me already happened. Like, I don't think, unless he does something completely crazy, like, I, I don't expect some great happening there. So uh, I agree with Dario on that. Well, it's just amazing that uh, we live in a time where the SEC has to sign off on Saturday Night Live monologues. Uh, but maybe those days are coming to an end because, Dario, you shared with me this very interesting article with uh, the clickbait we borrowed for our thumbnail, why Dogecoin is going to zero. And uh, you started in on this a little bit, but why don't we explore this and just see how many hearts are going to be broken out there in the crypto world? First of all, uh, Dogecoin doesn't have a limited supply like most of the crypto which we like to accumulate. It had uh, 100 million supply, which was already completely mined in 2015. And uh, by half 2015, they somehow uh, changed the algorithm, 
they dump their bags, the creators, and uh, since then, the supply is increasing. Uh, at this moment, uh, this year, it is increasing by 4% a year, and it should be uh, doubling every 20 years at this, at this pace. Also, uh, we have to say another few things. Um, it is possible now to mine Doge with any desktop, with any sort of hardware, with any hardware you have at home, you can add to the hash rate. You don't need, you don't need anything specific because of the algorithm which they're using, which is uh, kind of old and has not been changed. So this also, uh, with the fact that uh, the mining difficulty didn't improve and uh, as much as the price, this makes it uh, really uh, vulnerable to a 51% attack. This means that, uh, okay, already the chart is completely overextended. It's not even readable. You just, even if you put the monthly chart, whatever chart you're trying is not readable. It is just skyrocketing until uh, it, it, it just breaks, just breaks it. So already it could be a really good short. Also, uh, we have to say that with the possibility that it is very vulnerable to a 51% attack and all the bag holders are all young and they have no clue what they're doing, with all the, manip with all the market manipulation which we have seen, it doesn't take long until a few wells that say, you know, well, you know, it's time to rock this. It's time to try to collect some money here. So they could definitely, I mean, make it dump and they certainly have more money and they have more will rather than the bag holder that they don't know what they're doing. They don't know even what, what, what is it. They just buy it because they see it on TikTok. And um, overall, I mean, it's, it just doesn't look good. It just doesn't look good. So with all the opportunities I, I, out there, with all the cryptocurrency which, has, which are uh, outperforming anything else, why would you still buy that? I would shake my hand to who was able to ride it and make huge profit. It is kind of late now. That is a great point. Dogecoin has benefited quite a bit. Uh, basically, security through obscurity. It just wasn't worth attacking. But now that all, all lights are pointed at it, there really seems to be nothing to stop it from being attacked. It's almost begging for an update or a hard fork. Uh, and I'm just wondering, are a lot of people going to lose all of their savings that they put into this strange dog money before that happens? Is that ever going to happen? Or is this just a tulip, a crypto tulip, and we'll be laughing about it 10 years from now as a thing that came and went? So I think Doge is still, like, I, I, do, I agree with Dario here. Like, if you have Doge, I personally, I would be taking profit. I, like, I wouldn't just keep gambling. Like, it's it's... I didn't. I would have been selling at eight cents personally. I didn't. I didn't see this coming um, to this extent. But I do think Doge is a worthy coin. I think one thing that that Bitcoiners give it a lot of hate for is it's a lot of people's first experience with crypto is with Doge, and that, and that to me is a positive thing for the whole ecosystem. Whether you like Bitcoin, whether you like Ripple, whatever you like, some of these Doge people are going to come in, buy some Doge for the first time, and that's their onboard into crypto, and they're going to now poke around and like check some of these other other options out so i don't think it's like all negative just because it, it has had this crazy pump and like if it does go back somewhere to earth um people are going to lose some money uh, buying in now like i wouldn't be buying in now uh the only other thing is like i think it's a worthy coin does it mean it's a top five coin long term i don't know that but like top 25 to me seems like very reasonable status for for doge whether it's uh bitcoin uh of memes whether it's the silver to bitcoin's gold like there's there's a legitimate a lot of uh company mavs are taking it you know there's a lot of, there's uses for doge so it's uh i don't agree that it'll go to zero i think it'll i i it might keep going up man who knows well uh i my prediction is that it's gonna hit a dollar and then it's anybody's guess but uh 
just be careful out there people and i guess what gets my goal final thought on it is there's so many great projects out there in crypto that have so much opportunity to change the world for the better and all these weird billionaires are pushing and all these meme makers are pushing everybody to this untested currency that could actually in real life hurt people so it's been it's been like a multi-billion dollar currency for a long time at least several hundred of millions i think the the security concerns are are overblown at this point i mean it's been around forever it held up quite strong in the 20 2017 or the 2018 2019 dump um it's not like it's it's some totally untested thing like ethereum classic got 51 percent attacked verge got 51 percent attacked at like the same market cap that doge was just chilling at for years so i think if it were that easy people would already be doing it you know when verge and pornhub teamed up i thought that was going to be the new world reserve currency but you know shows that i know uh Here's a project I'm kind of bullish on, though. Uniswap V3 is live. And if you've all been part of Uniswap and you've got a liquidity pair set up over there with your MetaMask, be sure to log back into Uniswap and migrate your liquidity pair from V2 to V3. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay. You will learn by osmosis. But as we get into this, there's a few things I just wanted to show off. I'm very excited about V3 because you can take now you can take your liquidity pair that you've created let's say you created an ethereum bitcoin liquidity pair on uniswap which just basically means you provide enough of each coin so that people who want to trade on uniswap there's enough in the liquidity pool for them to conduct that business and you get a kickback every time people use part of your pool to conduct that business well now with this i think is very exciting they've actually taken your liquidity pair and turned it into an nft you can now trade your money generating engine to someone else and that engine you don't have to dismantle you don't have to send back out through the ethereum chain you just trade your nft and now that person owns it so i just think this is very cool uh it's blown my mind with some of the implications and uh dario have you read much about this or do you have any thoughts on decentralized finance in general I'm always happy when I see that they are uh, trying to beat each other into improving with features and giving more opportunities to the people to, you know, use these markets. Uh, it's always great because, uh, you know, every time they make some uh, big improvement, of course, they, they take some more liquidity, so they have some benefits, but then it's all open source somehow. So, also, the competitors, they can uh, right, fight back and try to say, wow, we didn't think about this, but what if we do also these things and these other things? So they keep improving, 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 improving. This is going so fast. In crypto, things are going so fast. All the dinosaurs which are outside and they are not able to keep it up, they will soon understand better later, maybe, because so we can accumulate and understand that they've been left behind. This thing is not going to slow. Uniswap, Aave, or whatever else, they are keeping improving so fast. I'm always happy to see these things, and uh, I mean, it couldn't be, it couldn't be better. That's true. Uh, watching the SEC or the CFTC or who, whatever alphabet agency is trying to sue Ripple these days, I mean, it just seems like they're already just 10 miles behind where the real world is at. I, I don't see a future for governments regulating finance controlling money <laughs> i'm having trouble to see seeing where government fits in general brett are you are you feeling the same way or is this uh is i this mean you still gotta to you, you still have to respect the government and so with uniswap there's a lot of sort of hype or speculation that um they're gonna like the tokens at a 22 billion dollar valuation right now the fees are off the charts i mean they're doing a, an absolute massive amount of volume the hopes of people holding this token is that at some point a portion of those fees are going to be sort of delivered to token holders however they're like a vc backed new york city company it is not so easy to just say hey we're going to take a portion of these fees and give them to the token holders uh with security laws or whatever and so i think there's a real concern is, is like how do you have this this awesome project and then as dario said you could have an anonymous team like pancake swap just fork it or you know take the good parts and then they don't have the same level of risk in terms of returning um like a portion of fees to their token holders so to me that's my biggest concern with uniswap 
is is the sort of they get handcuffed by being this New York company in a time where you have like anonymous offshore teams that can that can just copy a lot of it without the same level of risk. Uh, and then one thing I think is really cool about Uniswap V3 you can target your liquidity. So if you want to do like a stable coin ETH pair, you could be like, I want all my liquidity in the like 99 cent to $1, one cent band. Whereas before it was just sort of spread throughout the whole range. Mm -hmm. uh, you can really like target um, like certain areas to to be the liquidity provider. So like you're just, you're it's more efficient use of capital. So I think that's pretty cool. Seems like the other thing they have to work on is just the user interface. Steven Dahl in our chat is saying, I've been trying to migrate my liquidity since yesterday and nothing but slow and errors. They need to fix it. Now, I did have to refresh my browser once in that time. It seemed to have locked up. I was able to migrate that liquidity pair, though, but it isn't necessarily the most user-friendly experience yet. So there's still a long ways to go. But I guess ultimately I'm I'm pretty bullish on these projects. But uh, you know it's getting to be that time of day where we put on the safety glasses and ow <laughs> stupid headphones. Where we put on the safety glasses and we give you the market mania pick of the day. All right, let's see. Uh, Brett, what is your pick of the day? So I, I love the project, but I'm going to go with short Uniswap. Uh, again, I think a lot of crypto has been going with the buy the rumor, sell the news type of trading. And I, I think that people were expecting or hoping that in V3, a lot of these fees are going to be getting distributed uh, to the token holders. Again, I, I, I question whether or not that's going to be uh, possible just due to regulatory risk. So I, I think it's a, it's a reasonable short here. All right, yeah, I uh, that does make a lot of sense. I think I'll surprise the crowd here in just a second. But before we do that, uh, Dario, let us know your pick of the day. It is kind of obvious. I never short anything, especially in a bull market, but I'm going to short Doge. <laughs> this is, as I kind of said before, this Saturday night thing, I think the expectations are too high. I'm kind of scared that Elon will find a way to do something fancy, but it cannot be as much as the expectation, which have been completely unreasonable. I'm one of the people which believe that Doge will reach to $1 as much as I believe that Bitcoin will reach to 1 million and Ethereum will reach to whatever, 50,000. Everything is going up for uh, until the pandemic will fade, until they will keep printing money like this. So everything is going up, of course. It will be getting to one dollar, but it will. I don't think it will keep outperforming like this. And especially, I think that Saturday night will be a bit upsetting for most of people. Also, a lot of uh, weak hands in there, which means that when it will dip, it will dip hard. So that's a good opportunity for a short, small size, small size, just you know, for fun. But I'll do that. Right on. Well, that does make a lot of sense. So be careful out there in Doge land, folks. Uh, Brett, I'm going to cancel you out because I'm going long, Uniswap. The reason I'm going long is it is down a little bit. I think people are selling the news of the launch of V3. But to me, this is a buy and a long-term hold. Uh, I see good things for all decentralized exchanges. Uh, and Uniswap is proving sort of a philosophical case for me, too, that I just really appreciate. So... Going with that one. All right, boys. <laughs> you know, I think this is a Market Mania record. Two shorts on one show. Have we ever done that before, Brett? I don't think we have. I think I think we have, but I'm, I'm not positive. Well, I, I just can't. I was like a little short happy early on, and then I just kept losing all of them. As I agree with Dario, it's typically, typically not a good idea to short. Uh, so I would not not do it with significant money. Well, that makes a lot of sense to me. So I'd like to just remind all of our fellow degenerates to check out our uh, sponsor, Mindac Gold. Talk, talk to Mindac Jack. He'll hook you up with some precious metals deals if you call him and mention Market Mania. Also, follow us on all social media. Be sure to comment on our video. Share us. That's how we get the word out. 
So uh, we love doing this for you people, and we'll do it as much as we can. Tomorrow, we have a very special guest. We're bringing CEO Jason Less of Riot Blockchain to come answer our questions, the most exciting company in crypto. So you will not want to miss that 1030 a.m. Central, 1130 Eastern, assuming uh, we don't have any more tech problems. Thanks for sticking around. All right, I'm done rambling. We'll see you tomorrow, if there is a tomorrow. But for now, it's lights out. I never sleep if I don't have my medicine. I never sleep if I don't have my medicine. I never sleep if I don't have my medicine. I never sleep if I don't have my medicine. Time to write the wrong. Put your hands in the air if you like the song. If you're going over there, take it twice as long. Last time ain't talking about Tylenol. Oh, I bet you'd like to know. You can come around the way if you're trying to go. If you wanna switch lanes for a pot of gold, number domino, out of control. The usual, get mad cause I'm looking at your girl. Switch it up. I do it so much louder than everything you've heard. Everybody heard that the word that the world wasn't turning. Act like you're in a jury of how of a turning, where I would turn it. Can't a lie like this is to be burning. Don't act like you're in a daze. I imagine it'll look the other way. Couldn't clear space, so my mind was afraid of the time. Stroke life like in the moonlight. I'm in the mood right now, how about tonight? My interview's tight now, why would